Today on Coach's Corner, we're proud to feature Orange County Junior All-American football and the South Orange County Patriots. The Patriots host a wide variety of talented young athletes. See the stars of tomorrow today. This is Coach's Corner. I'm Paul Higgins, and all the action starts right now. Hello everybody, I'm Paul Higgins and welcome to this edition of Coach's Corner on location here at the shops of Mission Viejo in the city of Mission Viejo. You know, football season has begun and today we're not going to talk about high school or college, we're going to talk about the youth football scene here in South Orange County. Some great football action going on throughout the county. One of the teams and leagues we're going to talk about is Orange County Junior All-American. And in particular, it's the South Orange County Patriots. One of the few teams with Okjof in this area. The next closest team is in Irvine. So we have a lot to talk about, as you might expect. My guest tonight is one of the head coaches of the league, and his wife is also the president of the league. They're very hardworking people. This is Blake Kenwisher. A little bit later on, you're going to meet his youngest son, who plays with the South Orange County Patriots. Blake, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know that uh, this is not something you normally do. No. You're, you're a district manager <laughs> Correct. for an inventory company. Correct. So how are you feeling now? Uh, a little nervous, but I'll be, I'll be all right. <laughs> you know, you give up a tremendous amount of time to coach these young boys. And, and I know you've been doing it a while because I've covered your teams in the Correct. past. Yes. And uh, your thoughts about it. I mean, what allows you besides your job to do that I mean is it something you just really love and you get uh, involved yeah it's something I've done my whole life um, I've coached uh, our older ones like in basketball and football um, so I've been coaching with the Patriots for like seven years now yeah um, it's just fun like I see kids I'll be out to dinner and a kid will come up to me and go you know you're the reason that I fell in love with basketball and they keep playing right now and that's like all you need to hear to like right. keep doing this job yeah know? it's fantastic and I know your wife Corey president of the league you know, I talk to her quite often, and she has a lot of games that she has to schedule and a lot sure. of things going on. But one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on the show is to help expose the league, mm -hmm. actually get more kids interested in football. And, uh, and I know that you like that, obviously, because sure. you, you have a lot of kids that come out. Uh, a, a while back, and, and I want to get this out of the air, get it open in the air and get it <laughs> off. I had Lee Steinberg. He was one of my guests in the show. And we had talked about concussions in youth and high school and college football. How is, how is Orange County football or youth football dealing with when you're asked that? Coach, is my son going to get a concussion? Is my son going to have any trouble mm -hmm. as we get you know, down the road in life? How do you answer that question? Well, we, we do a lot with, uh, with um, Okjof. We, um, yeah. we have a concussion program that we have to go through, and we have to keep actually our certificate for passing that like in our books. Um, we also teach like the heads-up football tackling technique. Yeah. So those are all things you have to learn. And when you're talking to parents, you just have to let them know that if things are taught the right way, that the risks of having a concussion are very minor. Right. It's when kids are doing things the wrong way is when those things happen. Yeah. Um, but you can, honestly, you can get a concussion in any sport. Right. I mean, people get concussions in soccer, everything. Um, but as long as you're teaching things the correct way, teaching kids to keep their head up and not hitting with their helmets, and um, really are, are aware of what's going on in your surroundings, right. you can really limit really limit that what goes yeah. on in football, especially at the youth level. You're telling me here we are at the tail end of summer, but you've already been practicing for a couple of weeks. Correct. You actually start earlier than a, a Pop Warner. Correct. Um, uh, tell us about how you get started mm -hmm. and how you ease into the season. Yeah, um, we have a much longer preseason than like Pop Warner does. Um, we actually have a week where we're just in t-shirts and shorts and helmets where we just condition for an entire week. Um, so that gets the kids back in shape, back used to running, gets their muscles loosened up and all that kind of stuff. Then the second week we go into full pads, but they can only hit pads. They can't hit other kids. So they can only hit tackling dummies and that kind of thing. So that kind of lets us work on technique and stuff before they actually start hitting each other. Yeah. Then the third week we go into full contact. But we actually have um, almost seven weeks of practice before we get into our first games. Wow. So we'll have five full scrimmages before we go live into a real game. So it gives us plenty of time to get their techniques down and yeah. their form down and be more prepared as we go into I'm it. I'm sure the kids get pretty anxious too as they get ready for that first game. Yes. How mm -hmm. many seasons now in Orange County Junior All-American football have you coached? Because I know it's probably... I this know is my seventh. Seventh? Yeah. Holy cow, I was going to say three or four. Yeah. Seven years. Yeah. I coached flag for two years and then tackle the rest of the way up. Yeah. So. Do you, what do you tell the parents? I, 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 I'm curious because I coach my kids in other sports. Mm -hmm. I haven't yet not tackle football, flag, and that kind of stuff. 
But what do you tell the parents on the first day of practice? I always say when we're broadcasting, coaches coach, players play, and parents watch. That doesn't always happen, right? No, but you have to set expectations with your parents. Um, I, I have a meeting with my parents before the season starts and then on the first day of practice, just telling them that the coaches are going to coach your kids, you're here to support them and keep their spirits up and those kind of things, and yeah. we're there to turn them basically. Um, if you take a kid from the time he's five that I've been coaching to now they're 11, um, we're trying to take them from little kids and teach them how to, the game of football turns them into men as they grow up in life. So. Yeah, and uh, I know that you must have played football when you were younger. Tell Correct. me about your football experience and, um, and uh, what, what you did and how can you still, you know, obviously you love the sport. Um, I grew up uh, actually in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. so, oh, they don't like football there. No, <laughs> so it's a little bit different religion in, in that state. Um, we actually started playing tackle when I was four. So um, I played tackle all the way up through high school and um, we actually, the team I was on, we won like three state championships in really? Oklahoma. And then um, I had like, I think seven or eight kids from that team went on to play division one football. Wow. So it's just football back there is a little bit different, a little more serious <laughs> than it is out here, but it's California's really probably got better athletes. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, football is really starting to become more serious out here and year round. Yeah. So. How, how, um, how do you try to, to increase the exposure of the league in the sense of getting more kids to play? I know you probably have clinics and, and your mm -hmm. friends tell friends, but is there any ways that we can help you get the word out? Yeah, we, um, we try really, um, what we've tried to do since Corey took over and um, we've tried to just get more of a positive image out and that we're in the community doing things with the community. Um, we work with Dana Hills High School quite a bit. Um, they have like their Wounded Warrior Initiative and this year we're gonna kinda try to do some stuff with them on that. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're trying to support that. We try to support things. We go to parades and stuff in the community um, just to get our name out and to try to let people know that we're actually working out in the community and not right. just a football organization. Yeah. No, doubt, no doubt about it. When you, you, you told me earlier, you know, when a young man comes up to you and say, coach, you the reason why mm -hmm. that they went on to play basketball when you were coaching basketball. You, do you go home at night and just go, man, this is the greatest feeling, you know, because you don't get paid for it. No, you it's, know? when you have a kid tell you that, I mean, like that kid, I was just eating, eating at a restaurant, he, came, he walked in and then he walked up to me and uh, then his dad came up to me and goes, you know, you're the only reason he's still playing basketball. There's not a better feeling you can have than yeah. to know that you turned a kid onto something that he enjoys for the rest of his life. Yeah. So Before we um, get to our first break, can I ask you, is there a philosophy of Orange County Junior All-American football that like your creed or any, any saying that the league uh, abides by? Um, you know, like I always just say I cover sports TV for kids. And, positive, safe, and with quality. Anything like that with Orange County Junior All-American? I'm putting you on the spot there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Orange County Junior All-American is really about, um, the theme for this year is giving back. So um, that's kind of their theme. They do a lot with scholarships. Um, I think our chapter has had a scholarship winner in Okjaw for the last five to seven years running straight that they pick, that they give them a college scholarship. So, you know, those are the kind of things that Okjaw tries to do. Um, us as a chapter, we really are trying to go for more of a family type atmosphere. Um, there's lots of football organizations around us that have five, six, seven hundred kids. Right. We're more of like the 150 to 160 kids, yeah. and our board, we know almost we know probably every kid in every family that walks by. That's awesome. So that's what we're going for. We don't really want to go to bigger right. per se. We just try to get the right people that fit our organization. Well, obviously, you're doing something right because it's a lot of fun, as you can see from the footage. It's very exciting, Orange County. Junior All-American football. When we come back, we'll have our first player, Nathan Solis. He's an 11-year-old at defensive end and also a center. We'll talk to him. You're watching Coach's Corner right here at the Shops in Mission Viejo. Mission Basilica School, located in historic San Juan Capistrano, is a blue ribbon school focused not only on quality education, but spiritual enlightenment, creating a learning environment that's second to none. I love the feel of the school and, and what it brings. They're wonderful kids, have great family lives. They are brothers and sisters once they reach the campus. A Blue Ribbon School for Academic Excellence, located on the beautiful grounds of Mission San Juan Capistrano. Hello everybody, I'm Paul Higgins and welcome back to Coach's Corner here on location at the Shops in Mission Viejo. Of course, we're talking football. It is that time of year and it's with the Orange County Junior All-American South Orange County Patriots. 
and uh, we're talking to Coach Blake Kenwisher. He is the coach of the Junior Pee Wee team. I forgot to mention that with the South Orange County Patriots. And now joining us is 11-year-old Nathan Salas, and he goes to Aliso Viejo Middle School. And Nathan, how you doing? Good. You thought we were going to talk about football. I just want to know about your girlfriends. You're a handsome guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you. So coach, tell me about this young man. He's told me he's playing for seven years already. Yeah, Nathan's been with me for a long time. Um, we run, uh, the offense we run, everything is a shotgun snap. So he's our center. Um, I think last year, the whole time between scrimmages and games, I think he probably had two bad snaps the whole year. So he, he plays a very, very key role. Um, not only that, he's a great kid. Um, hangs out with my son all the time. Uh, just a really good kid that's a joy to be around. Yeah, Nathan, so tell me about that. All the action starts with you, with your hands on the ball. Yes, it does. How important is that position that you have learned about center? How important is that position after you snap the ball? It still is a very important position even after you snap the ball because there's still like a little bit of a gap between your two guards next to you, so you got to fill the gap up. They say that sometimes the, uh, I've heard this many times, that the center is one of the smartest persons on the field, players on the field. How do you do in school? Good, good. Excellent. What's your favorite subject? Uh, social studies. Social studies. Now, um, you're what, going into, what grade, six? Seven? Yeah, sixth six. Sixth grade. So at middle school, so it's the first year in, in sixth grade. Your thoughts about playing football, why do you play it, and why do you choose to continue to play it? I play it just because I like the game, and I like to have fun. Yeah, and I know you couldn't hear what Coach was saying earlier when he was on the show by himself and I was beating him up a little bit. Um, but uh, I know this game is, is a really fun game and, and your, your favorite aspect of it, is it going to practice? Because you're going to go from that chair and you're going to go to practice right after you get done with this TV show. Yeah. Is, it, is it game day? Is it practice? Is it being with your buddies? Tell me about that. It's kind of with my friends going to practice, just having fun. What's your most memorable moment so far in football? I don't know. Yeah. I've had many memorable moments, but I can't name one. Yeah, that's a hard one. Coach, when you get young men, young boys, mm -hmm. how do you know where, what position to play them at? A kid will say, hey, can my, hey I'm going to run the ball, Coach. I'm mm -hmm. going to run the ball. But you no, know, he might be a defensive end or something, you know? Yeah, we put them through. Um, what I do is the first two days, we put them through like a combine type situation. Um, that I've come up with like eight different things we put them through to kind of get, judge their quickness, speed, aggression, those kind of things. Yeah. And then we kind of line them up based on the scores they get of you know where we think they go. Right. But you never really know until they start hitting, yeah. like where they're gonna where they're gonna fall and as far as football goes. You'll have kids that you think, you know, go in one place and then you start hitting and they end up in a totally different place than you thought. So you always have to have an open mind. Right. Especially at this age, um, they come back. One year they have growing pains, you know, from growing too fast and their legs hurt all the time. They can't run that great. And then they right. come back the next year and they're back to normal. So you kind of have to judge year to year of like what the kids are, where they're at in their bodies and that yeah. kind of stuff. And Nathan, you're in the trenches all the time on defense. You're a defensive end. Yes. What I position do you like better, center or defensive end? I like defensive end more because you kind of have a little bit more action in it. Yeah. And then you're hitting people as opposed to kind of getting hit, right? Yeah. Center, a lot of contact in what you're doing. Yes. Whether what side, every, Whatever side of the ball you're on, you know you're going to hit somebody, right? Right. Yeah. Tell me about that. Coach was tell, talking about teaching you guys how to hit correctly and keeping your heads up so you don't get concussions and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, tell me about how they teach you to tackle properly because I know Coach does a great job of it. Well, I'm sorry. How, how do they teach you in practice how to tackle correctly? Well, you, they put us through like different drills on like um, staying, low. staying low. Like they'll have us tackle bags and do like different things with the bags. Yeah. Do you have a little brother? No, I don't. You have a big brother? No, I have two older sisters. You tackle them? No. <laughs> I tackle my dad. Tackle your dad. <laughs> uh, Blake, when, when you get ready for your first game, I know there's a lot of anxiousness going on in you. How do you temper as a coach that anxiousness and, and that? I mean, you're, you were a player, you're an athlete. You would rather be playing that darn game. Correct. So, so how do you pull back and go, I got to coach this thing now? Um, you just have to you know, realize when you go into your first game that you've had seven weeks to prepare them. So you just have to get in the mindset that you've taught them what they need to know. And then you just try to keep them calm and 
calm and focused on what their jobs are. We, um, I really stress technique and repetition and things so that when they get in a game and they're stressed and stuff like that, their, their mind just takes over so they're not having to think. They're, they just know my left foot goes here and then my right foot goes here and that's all they really have to remember. Yeah. Um, so we, just, we really work on rep repetition a lot. How often do you get in a game and have maybe 10 plays called like we hear about? Mm -hmm. Do you throw them out? Oh, that's not working. Let's just throw that one out. We're we're a little different. We're like a we're a power running team, and we run like an old school single wing offense from Oklahoma. Uh, kind of, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in the wishbone probably from Oklahoma, but um, so like a lot of times we don't run more than four plays in a game, four okay. different plays. Wow. So if something's working. I've learned over coaching, if something's working, I just keep doing it until they stop it. Well, there was a good coach, I think his name was Vince Lombardi that said that, right? Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I learned over yeah. seven years. Yeah, so. that's amaz amazing. Nathan, I know that um, you've got a, a big season ahead of you. You can't wait to get started. What is your goal this season, individually, personally, for you? What do you want to do? My goal this year, I would, I would like to lead my team to the Super Bowl. To the Super Bowl. How many games do you have planned? Do you know? How many games do we have? How many games on the schedule? Ten. Ten games. So that 11th game would be the Super Bowl, or, or would you have a couple of playoff games? It'd be playoff games, right? Yeah, we'd have to win 12, 12 games. 12, 12 games. games. Yeah. I wish you the best of luck. I think you're going to do a great job. Thank you. Nathan Salas and uh, girls, of course, he's taken. He told me his mom <laughs> likes him the best of all, right? <laughs> Nathan Salas joining us. When we come back, we'll have another very important player of the team and I think coach is pretty close to him. We'll introduce you to him right after this. You're watching Orange County Junior All-American Football right here on Coach's Corner. Mission Basilica School is a Catholic parochial school with single grade classrooms from pre-kindergarten through eighth grade. We have absolutely the best to offer in education. We don't just educate the child academically. They are nurtured spiritually. They are guided through their spiritual journey. They are loved, every being of them. A Blue Ribbon School for Academic Excellence, located on the beautiful grounds of Mission San Juan Capistrano, Mission Basilica School. Hello everybody, welcome back to this edition of Coach's Corner. Once again, we're here at the Shops of Mission Viejo. It's a great time to be shopping. The fall season getting ready to happen. You've got Halloween and Christmas right around the corner. Believe me, it's gonna come super fast. So make sure you visit the Shops of Mission Viejo. We're talking Orange County Junior All-American Football, the South Orange County Patriots, the Pee Wee Division, and uh, uh, Junior Pee Wee Division, I should say. And joining us now is a young man that I covered quite a bit um, of course the last couple of years. Last year he was in a bowl game that you'll see highlights of, but he's number 12. This is Austin Kenwisher. Austin, I just learned that you are 11 years old going into the seventh grade. Yeah. What are you doing? That's like, you're skipping ahead a couple years, right? Yeah, I started school early, so. You started school earlier? Yeah. All right, what's the hurry? I don't know, I just, I don't know. I, can do it, so I guess I can. No, the school is important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Coach, I know that this is probably the best relationship a father and son can have. Not only get, do you get to be on a TV show with him, but you get to <laughs> coach him. Yep. Are you hard on him or what are you, is, is he, hold on, is he hard on you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is he harder on you than the rest of the guys? Yeah, but it's fine. I mean, I don't really. It's all right. So. Yeah, it's all right. You've got He's two older brothers too. to look to, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Coach, how hard is that, that your son's out there? And you know that you probably have him pick up the cones and the balls and the ball bag and everything else before you get in the car, too. Yeah, it's, you have to walk a fine line with your, with your son. Um, we try and practice, really. I have other coaches. If he needs to be talked to about something, I try to have other coaches deal with it and oh, okay. talk to him. Um, we kind of try to put that in. Um, but he's uh, having two older brothers. He, He's kind of been like advanced a little bit and everything yeah. because he's had to survive with getting beat up by a 19 year old and a 17 year old. Right. So, so he's kind of advanced. So I kind of expect a lot out of him, but you know, it's just a dad thing. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. And there's no, no, um, besides your mom, no sisters or no nope. girls in the family. How about you got a girl dog? Yeah, I have a girl dog. There you go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> that yeah. helps. Balances out a little bit. Yeah. Now, why football? You've been playing seven years. How much do you enjoy it and why do you play? Well, I basically, I've been playing so 
for seven years just because I love the sport. It's fun to play. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't be playing for seven years, so. And the, the position of running back and the position of safety, if coach says, again, coach is your dad, if he's in the car going to a game, son, you're only gonna play this position today, what would it be for you, running back or safety? I don't know, I kinda like running back more, just cause you get more of the glory, I should say. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I don't know, I kinda just like offense better, but yeah. either way, is, I Let, like both of them. Let's so. go on the other side of the ball and play safety for a second. Yeah. When the ball's about to get snapped, there's a lot going on. Are you looking at the quarterback's eyes? Are you looking about the setup? Are you looking over to coach on the sidelines? What well, do you I'm, tell me about that? I'm pretty much looking everywhere. I'm trying to shift everybody where they need to be and do my job at the same time, so. Yeah. Coach, what is, what is his job as a safety in junior All-American football? Um, he calls all our defenses. Um, for this year, this is the first year the coaches can't be on the field with them. So he'll be in charge of getting all the signals from the sideline. Um, calling our defense, and then when the other team comes up to the line of scrimmage, shifting left or right based on where their strong side and weak side is on the field. So he has a lot going on. How tough is your competition? I mean, you, you mentioned it, that there's not a lot of teams down here, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy, but mm -hmm. it's one aspect you kind of like it that way. Yeah. You guys do a little bit of traveling. Mm -hmm. um, where's the competition? Tell me about that. Um, most of our competition that we play is up in the LA area. We play um, a lot of chapters that have numerous people in the NFL. Yeah. Um, we play the Carson Colts, Baldwin Hills Bruins, uh, uh, Los Angeles Hurricanes. Um, and that's why I like the league is we get to take our kids and go play against the best talent, the best speed, so that when they get to high school, they're prepared for that. Right, mm -hmm. right. This league this year, Junior Pee Wee, your dad just mentioned it. I, I talked to a lot of athletes and they say, Paul, the difference between high school to college is speed. Yeah. And the difference between college and the pros is more speed. Yeah. Are you think you're going to recognize that this year? You think the kids are going to be faster? Well, yeah, they get faster every year, but I'm also getting faster at the same time, so it kind of balances each other out, but they're still going to be getting faster every year, so. Talking about speed, when you get the call and you get the ball, what's your first thing that you do when you get that ball? What is the first thing you do? Well, I obviously secure the ball that I am. I run with it. Okay. I'm trying to find the end zone, and I'm really looking out for the linebackers, what's around me, looking for my blockers to follow them and stuff. So it's it's just like safety. There's a lot going on in one split second. So Austin, how hard is it for you to be patient and not just blow by your blockers? You know, and blow by somebody that's going to lay a block for you, or do you do you do that because you're so much faster than maybe? an offensive guard, on offensive tackle, or a tight end? No, I still follow my blockers because I've learned over the times if you don't, if you just blow past them, you're obviously just going to get your, you're yeah. getting it nailed. So I've learned to slow down a little bit, look at my surroundings and follow where they're going. So, Austin, I know why your dad coaches you and I know how much he enjoys it. What do you like about your dad coaching you as opposed to somebody else? He pushes me harder because if he wasn't coaching, then it would just be like a regular coach coaching me. And I like how he pushes me harder than what I can be, so. Yeah. And then this year, what is your goal this year? Um, basically to just stay healthy, mostly. Um, last year Amen I got Amen, for injured. all of us. <laughs> yeah, I got injured a couple times last year, but yeah, I just want to stay healthy the whole year. So. Well, you're a good looking young man. Keep that helmet on, all right? All right. And I, and I talked to Nathan. He told me that he has more girlfriends right now than you. <laughs> What's up with that? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I guess, I guess. That's kind of a lie. But <laughs> That's good. So, That's yeah. a good comeback. I like that. Well, you did a great job on the show. Blake, wonderful Thank job you, on the show. Appreciate I it. told you to go by fast. Yep. I know you're anxious to get to practice. <laughs> Blake Kenwisher, he is the coach of the South Orange County pa Patriots, pardon me, the Junior Pee Wee Division. Make sure you look them up. And of course, they've got athletes coming out of Mission Viejo, Dana Point, San Clemente, Aliso, all around. So if you're interested, make sure that you look up the South Orange County Patriots. I want to thank the fine folks of the people here at the shops of Mission Viejo and also the people of the city of Mission Viejo. They have been so kind with us here on Coach's Corner. Until next time, I'm Paul Higgins. Thank you so much for watching.